On behalf of the Fathers of Mercy, I'd like to wish all of you a very happy Easter, a welcome to all of the visitors. I recognize a lot of the faces today, but there's a lot of faces that I don't recognize, and so it is good to see you all here. On this day, we celebrate the Lord's resurrection. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. On Friday, February the 19th, a new movie came out. It was called, and it is called Risen. It was produced by the company Affirm Films, which made the faith-based movies Courageous and Fireproof and other movies. And this company this time made this particular movie in association with uh, Sony Entertainment. It was released on a limited basis, and so not every movie theater in the country was able to show it. It was very well received by those who saw it, better than a lot of the secular movie critics were willing to admit, because it was very well done. And I do not think that this movie being made by Sony Entertainment indicates any great conversion on the part of that company. Nonetheless, it points to the popularity of faith-based movies, and in the case of this movie, a man who is seeking faith. Because it really tries to answer what questions people are asking about faith and maybe about doubts of faith and struggles with faith. The movie is historical fiction, so it does not follow the gospel narrative as we heard today with Mary and Peter and John going to the tomb. You do see all of those characters in the movie. But this is what might have happened if you just want to kind of have a, a pious daydream about how things play out. In particular, with the character who is the lead character, a Roman tribune by the name of Clavius, who is charged by Pontius Pilate with the task of finding a body that has suddenly disappeared the day after the Sabbath. A Jewish carpenter named Jesus, his body disappeared, and the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin are very worked up about it, and so the movie plays out. Clavius has to go in search of the body. Probably the biggest drawback of the movie is the, the apostles come across, as I think they're trying to portray them as joyful, they come across as goofballs in some sense, but the apostles were a unique bunch anyway, and so we have to grant them some uh, leeway. But the movie is worth having in your in your family library. It is rated PG-13. There are some intense scenes. The, the, uh, you know, there's some battle scenes and whatnot where, so it wouldn't be good for, for little ones to see it. But it's, it's a very thought-provoking movie and, and a good movie. What I would like to focus on this morning, though, from this movie is an exchange that happens between the lead character, Clavius, the soldier, and Pontius Pilate. They're having a more laid-back conversation, and Pilate asks Clavius, what is it that you want in life? So Clavius says, the stock answers for any ambitious Roman soldier, money, a place in Rome, power and prestige, a family, and then he says something that transcends all of the material desires. He says, I desire a day without death. A day without death. It makes perfect sense for a man like Clavius to desire a day without death because as a Roman soldier, he was very good at dealing out death. He had to work hard and he got his hands dirty with preserving the land holdings of the Roman Empire. So he was not afraid to deal out a little death. Can we visualize a day without death? Or the effects of sin and death being one of the effects of sin in our lives? Can we visualize what that would be, a day without death, a day without suffering and sickness, 
a day without selfish inclinations whereby we fall into sin. Ultimately, that's desiring heaven. And that's what we celebrate today on this Easter Sunday is the day without death, the day when Christ, who suffered and died for us, he conquered sin and death and opens for us the gates of heaven, opens for us the possibility that if we die as a friend of God and we strive to grow in holiness in this life, that we will one day experience that day without death. But it does take faith as Christians, as Catholics. And that's ultimately what the character in the movie Clavius was looking for, was faith, something to believe in, something bigger than himself, and rather someone bigger than himself. And that's what we're all called to as well, to, for that deepened faith and for that desire for heaven. But it takes faith to be able to make sense of what happened to Jesus on Good Friday, Holy Thursday, and concluded on Good Friday. It takes deep faith to make sense of that. As Father Ken pointed out last night, the apostles' world had come to an end because the Messiah was dead, and they didn't know what to do. It looked like the end of everything that had happened for three years. It takes faith to see, and we need this faith to see that Christ transforms death. The big death, it, big deaths in our lives, and the little deaths, the suffering, the nonsense that we encounter in life. An early church father, St. Theodore the Studite, said this about Christ's death and the transformation that happens through death. This was the tree on which Christ, like a king on a chariot, destroyed the devil, the Lord of death, and freed the human race from its tyranny. This was the tree upon which the Lord, like a brave warrior, wounded in hands, feet, and side, healed the wounds of sin that e the evil serpent had inflicted on our nature. A tree once caused our death, but now a tree brings life. Once deceived by a tree, we have now repelled the cunning serpent by a tree. What an astonishing transformation that death should become life, that decay should become immortality, that shame should become glory. And so as his followers, for the last 40 days, we have spent this time of Lent, this time of reflecting on our own sinful past and carrying out penance and sorrow for our sins. And so now is the time for authentic joy. Hopefully we have entered into this time of Lent and we've really embraced those sacrifices that we unite to the sacrifices of Christ on the cross. And we, in our baptism, whenever we were baptized, we put on Christ and we became a new creation. And we descended into those waters that washed us clean, and now we rise with him in glory on this Easter Sunday. And so to desire and to continue in faith, carrying on into the future, because the joy is not complete. It is Easter Sunday, and we have had a little foretaste of heaven, but we're not there yet. And that's one of the, uh, just a little tinge of sadness, and that's the only tinge of sadness and sorrow that we experience today, is that we are not completely united with God in heaven yet, but we've had a taste of it, and we celebrate that today because Christ has won the war. It is up to us to carry out the battles, and so we celebrate today with joy because authentic joy comes from love. It is a fruit of love, and what is love? but sacrifice, and being willing to make sacrifices for the beloved. And if we've made sacrifices out of love for God, then this will truly be a joyful day for us. I got a text message yesterday from my brother. He sent it out to the whole family, and this is very typical of my brother, because he, he'd had a good long Lent, and he, he asked a question to the family. He said, 
is anyone else hungry for some ice cream, beer, mozzarella sticks, Snicker bars, steak, whiskey, potato chips, Whoppers, and a margarita? I hope he doesn't try to eat all of those at once. That would, that would reintroduce death back into your stomach, and that would be bad. But to, to enter into this joy, this, but to keep focused on the fact that it is Christ our God who has risen from the dead, and he is the source of that joy, and he is truly risen, as St. Paul reminded us in the second reading today. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. And the truth is that Christ is truly risen. Praised be Jesus Christ now and forever.